What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing them the bacon NBA DFS video. We are back for Saturday, March 23rd. Hopefully, this video finds you doing well. Hopefully, you did well yesterday. Like we prefaced in yesterday's video, I am looking at scaling back on NBA a little bit, playing-wise. I'm still going to bring you guys the videos. I'm still going to bring you everything we have on the site. But we're like we said, we're getting to the point where it's the you know, the teams have some teams have already made the playoffs, so they're going to be playing some, you know, their stars may not play full set of games and stuff like that. Then we've got uh, teams that are on the brink. They're going to push. They're going to put some other players in there. Then we've got teams that are just eliminated already. So we're seeing players that we've never seen before, or we're going to see players uh, that we've heard about, but then they get extended minutes and then it just becomes a crapshoot. So we're still going to continue, still going to bring you these videos, uh, but be weary. I would like slow down. I wouldn't be going as hard as you did the whole other part of the season. Um, on the bright side, Thursday is baseball. We are back with Thursday. So DraftKings has baseball. It has the slate there, but we don't have who the starting pitchers are yet for the teams. Once those are made available on uh, Baseball Savant, I will be making the video, and we're very excited for all that content to come out. So, that being said, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hopefully you learned something. If you're a frequent visitor, if you've been here multiple times, welcome back. So, we try to have two giveaways every single day. You can win both of them. So, first way, like the video, be a subscriber, and leave a comment. You got to leave a comment for the comment picker. 50 likes on a video, you have a chance to win a free week of DFS content. 100 likes is a free month. 125 likes, a free year. 150 or more likes is a lifetime pass to FTA+. Plus. The second way to do it, like the video, be a subscriber, and tell me who you think is going to score the most amount of DraftKings fantasy points and how many fantasy points will he score. If you get it closest without going over, you will win a free week. If you get it exactly correct, which we haven't had yet, you will win a year pass, normally $200 value. So before we get started, we have partnered up with DFS Hero. The link is in the description. If you click on that link and you sign up for the first time, you will get 15% off for their awesome lineup optimizer. Plug in our information into their optimizer and we will give you a free month of DFS. If you sign up for their yearly package, we will give you a free year on top of that. So. In the description of this video is also our Discord channel, the article for today with some of our projections that has three top, three mid, and three value picks at each position. Those will change throughout the day, so definitely come into our Discord channel. We do our value plays there. We do our core plays, and we're very, very, very excited to bring you all that content. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Vegas odds, and then we're going to look at each game. We're going to look at the depth charts and we're gonna build a lineup using one of our tools. So at the end of the video, I'll show you everyone who's here, stick around, I will show you all of the stuff we have on FTA Plus. Now, hitting the ads, clicking on the videos, sharing the videos, all definitely help us out. Small channel, trying to grow, trying to get to 10,000 subscribers soon, so that is my goal. If we can get to 10,000 subs before May 1st, I will give away two lifetime passes to FTA Plus. So share it with your friends, family, you know, anybody. So my question of the day for you, what do you make of the Shohei Otani situation? Do you think he was actually gambling or do you think he had absolutely no idea about it? At the end of this video, I'm going to link a video I posted yesterday looking at a conspiracy from Twitter saying he threw games and these massive bets were taken when these games were, when he was pitching. So definitely give that some love as well. Very curious to hear your thoughts. I don't know what to think. I think there's more to this Otani story than we know. I don't think he just, the story has changed literally like four times in two days. Something fishy's going on. So let me know, what do you think? That could be your one comment here on top of everything. But I'm going to link that at the end. Please give that some love as well. So let's take a look at these Vegas numbers real quick. So the first game on the slate, Sacramento versus Orlando. 
Opening line, Sacramento's a one and a half point favorite, so it could be a very close game. Again, though, check the Vegas numbers later because these are the opening lines. They will change throughout the day, depending on when you watch this video. Charlotte versus Atlanta. Both of these teams are bad. Charlotte's just worse. Atlanta's not that good. They are a ten and a half point favorite right now. Toronto versus Washington, which is wild to me that Washington is an eight and a half point favorite because they are not good. That just means Toronto's that bad. So that is definitely, that is an interesting line to look at. I would have thought it would have been the other way around. Phoenix versus San Antonio. Phoenix being a four and a half point favorite. We got to take a look into this game a little bit. Boston versus Chicago. Chicago opens as a seven point favorite versus Boston. What? That's weird. Um, anyway, uh, Utah versus Houston. Houston open as an eight and a half point favorite. And Portland versus Denver. Portland open up as an eight and a half point favorite here. Some of these lines just feel weird to me. Um, pay attention to that. Check this later because this just seems weird. I, I don't know. Um, not a huge fan of these lines, uh, but we'll see. So we've seen what they've opened with. I'm very curious when you watch this video what they have changed to. So usually by like 10 a.m give it on the day of we will have updated the nba tab here and we will update uh the vegas numbers we'll, we'll check that out as well so but we're still going to look at it we're still going to have some exposure we're going to have some fun with it too so we look at the total here just kind of looking at these games uh sacramento versus orlando 219 kind of a lower one charlotte versus atlanta 215 which is nuts because it's a 215 and a half over under with Atlanta being a double digit favorite. Um, Toronto versus Washington, Washington, uh, 211 and a half. Phoenix versus San Antonio, 225. Boston versus Chicago, 212. Utah versus Houston, 227. And Denver versus Portland, 227 as well. Now, Utah loves to give up a ton of points. So I think we want to look at this, this Houston team as one of the top teams to look at to to uh, uh, kind of mini stack again, a uh, mini stack with, but also kind of the same thing with Portland as well. So we take a look at Sacramento versus Orlando. You guys know, so obviously Sabonis, Fox, Paolo, Wagner, Monk, like you guys know these names. These are ones they have great, they have great uh, numbers. We know they're high priced. We know, um, but we've got to look at things. So. Right off the bat, I'll tell everybody, do not follow these numbers at all. I would say go check out our projections because it has their DVP on it. We also have their last five games. So what their la in their last five games, the player that score, uh, what their floor is, what their average is, and what their ceiling is in their last five games. So you can take that and you can kind of see like, so Sabonis, for instance, Sabonis, 53 and a half fantasy points per game is what he's averaging on the year in our projections you will see what he's averaging the last five games so you can kind of see what that's looking like and then on top of that you take those players and you look with the nba points allowed by position tool depending on what it is and so let's just let first for instance we'll look at center we'll look at uh, what orlando's giving up so orlando's giving up no oh, wrong thing um orlando right here you can kind of come down. You can see that they're giving up only 48.7 fantasy points per game to the opposing center. So that being said, he obviously is scoring more than that, but you can see they're pretty good against the center. So maybe that'll deter you away from spending 10900 on him because when you are building a cash lineup, you're looking for basically the floor is 7.5 times value, meaning Sabonis here, okay? At his DraftKings price, anyway, ten thousand nine hundred times seven point five, he would have to get eighty-one point seven five to hit basically the floor. Um, probably not going to happen. Most likely not going to happen, especially since this is a really good matchup. So this is just one to look at. I'm probably at the moment. I'm probably not paying up for Sabonis. We obviously have to wait for news of players that are questionable for this slate to be out we have to wait for people um to go either probable or out so that is why in the article that will be linked in this video 
we have three top, three mid, and three value picks at each position, but those value picks change throughout the day when we get news and notes of player X, Y, and Z being out of the game. So that is why I'll tell you, check our player projections and check everything on uh, the site and Discord about an hour before tip-off to see if anything has changed. So that being said, I'm still looking at um, some exposure. So Keon Ellis did let us down on, was it Thursday night? Yeah, yes, absolutely. We used him the night before, got a swing 1.25 at 3,700. They bumped him up to 4,100. He played 21 minutes, one for three in field goals made, zero for two and three-pointers made, one rebound, one steal, four, uh, yeah, two points. He had two points and then 5.25 fantasy points. He was actually one of our core plays. So this is why I'm telling you that we're getting to the weird part of the day or part of the um, season where – these players pop up. They have some good games. We use them. They don't have good games. We're not going to get it right every time. It's just the same thing with sports betting. We're not going to get it right. We got screwed by New Mexico in the uh, uh, March Madness on, on Friday. My question, second question of the day, how are your brackets doing? I know that we put, I think we have 23 or 17. I think we have 17 of you guys from these videos in our FTA sports March Madness. First place second place and third place all get um, first place gets a free year second place gets a free month and third place gets a a weekly pass um some of the, some crazy things have already it's already been mad which is nuts um but yeah kentucky losing everything's been weird but second question how are your brackets doing who do you have winning it so other plays maybe you don't want to go ellis maybe you want to go cole anthony jonathan isaac i'm okay with that that's probably as low as i go um, but I do feel confident. I like everyone here, basically, other than Sabonis at the moment. The match was not good. He's very high priced. He, he's got to score a ton to make it out. So what I was saying is seven and a half times value. Take, take, take your potential lineup. You think multiply it by seven and a half times value. See if it's even close, mix and match that. Look at the DVP. See if that makes sense. If it's attainable, go for it. If you don't think it's attainable, probably off of him but i'm at the moment i'm probably off of sabonis i'd pay up at other positions here so um i don't mind wendell carter here against sacramento jalen suggs harrison barnes keon ellis i'm okay with uh, tournament only and he, he burned me last time if he burns me again i'm probably out of this one charlotte versus atlanta atlanta being a 10 and a half point favorite is wild right now um murray obviously makes sense but my problem is, if it is a blowout, Murray's going to be the first one sat. Um, on the flip side, Miles Bridges, if they are playing from behind, absolutely love Miles Bridges. Because Ball, I don't think Ball plays again. Yeah, I mean, he's already ruled out. There's no point to play Ball this season. The rest of the season. Uh, Miles Bridges in a great spot. 8,200, I don't mind that at all. Um I really like that spot there. Uh, Brandon Miller, Boyanovich, Clint Capella, like these guys make sense. You want to get a little bit lower down in the weeds. We've used him multiple times, game logs. The minutes have been there. He just hasn't done a lot the past couple of games. They brought him down to 5,400, could be playing from behind, should see an extended amount of minutes since ball is out. I don't mind him at 5,400. I'm okay with him. Grant Williams, I'm okay with. The same thing with Grant. The minutes, they've kind of gone down a little bit. He hasn't done much. But, I mean, he's coming off a bad game against Orlando. They were down big. Um, if they, I guess the only thing is they might sit him for younger guys if they do go down big again, kind of like what we saw against Orlando. So that's the only thing that does concern me. But, again, looking at him, he's 4,800. We could take that hit if that's the only hit in your lineup. Um, we've used Vit before. He's 3,900 at his, so they have bumped him up a little bit. Um, and if Atlanta goes up as big as they think, I think he could see 30 plus minutes in this one. 3,900 for Vit, I'm good with. Um, I don't mind him at all, actually. Davis Bertans is another one if they're from behind. I mean, his price being 3,800, the minutes, not much, but they, you see, they pulled him. That's the only problem. They may pull him if it is a blowout. So, but at 3800, we could take we could afford even more than that. We could be looking at I mean his minutes have been there. 
it, they are there. They've been there, but he has not done much with it. So as far as low as I'd go is probably Vit, maybe Bertans. Um, but in between these two would be as far as I'd go down here. And I mean, we know the bigger names that we're going to use in this lineup. Toronto versus Washington. Washington, so is quickly out, out. So didn't play Friday. Um, kind of watch that all these guys have the out. If, if these guys are out, obviously that bumps up. So Kyle Kuzma, I'm a little bit weary. If they do go up big, they might pull out Kuzma. So Kuz could be gone. Um, Kelly Olenek, I, I, I like him. Washington, so Washington gives up a ton of fantasy points. As you saw, overall, they give up the most amount of fantasy points at 263.1 to almost every single position. Um, they are very bad. Very, very bad. Um, and they're supposed to be up big. So this could be a massive game. Um, I love I love Toronto on this side. Um, I do. But a lot of people are out for Toronto. I, I know Gary Trent was... I loved him Friday. He was out. Uh, got ruled out. Whether or not he's going to be out again, we'll see. Um, but Bruce Brown, I like. So if Gary Trent is out, Bruce Brown being there, I mean, it will bump up some more Toronto players. But I want exposure to both sides of the ball. I think I'm off of Kispert. He just... He let us down on Thursday. 5,200, 23. I mean, he put up 23.75, but he played 37 minutes, back-to-back 35-plus games, and he hasn't even, he has not done well. They dropped him down. Um, I just don't trust him enough. Tournament-wise, throw him in there, I'm okay. But that's basically it. That's basically what I only play now, since it is getting that weird time of NBA, or just tournaments. Um, Ochai, I don't mind Ochai. I'm okay with him at 4,800. Jordan Wara, I'm okay with Sh- um, I don't mind Justin here. Ha- didn't really do much. Only played nine minutes against Sack, but we had back like we had some really good games out of him. Forty seven hundred. We if he plays, that's the problem. Um, that's the problem. Move back to the bench. I think a lot of people have to be out for Washington to make him a, a good play. Jonte Porter. I don't mind Jonte against Washington. They do give up a ton of fantasy points. Um, and then, yeah, we kind of got to wait for Washington players to be out. Um, but we could look at Bernard. We could look at Paul, uh, Baldwin Jr. If some of these players are actually going to be completely out of this game. Phoenix versus San Antonio. Wimby, love me some Wimby. I'd rather pay for Wimby than Sabonis today, I think. Um, Kevin Durant is here. Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. Like, you guys know all these names. These are all good names to use. Come down here a little bit. Champagne's brother. The minutes, though, they've they kind of been there. That he just hasn't done it. Played 16 minutes, got .75. Get out of here, um, Malachi Branham. Now, again, I I don't think he's a viable option when Wimby is in the game. Uh, the minutes have kind of been there. He just hasn't done anything with them. Um, so I'm probably off of him. Uh, a lot of people have been on Bull Bull lately for some reason. He hasn't done much with it, and the minutes are kind of there. Not really. So I'm off of him. Um, players that I do like a little bit lower, Royce O'Neal, I'm okay with. Keldon Johnson, J- I'm okay with Jeremy here. Uh, T- uh, Trey Jones, I'm okay with. Nurkic, I'm okay with. And then, yeah, I mean, Vassal, Beal, all the other names, love. I love their matchups in this game. San Antonio, we'll see. But I think this could be a, a high-scoring game and, and stay close. Boston versus Chicago, again, I mean... We've got so many questionable tags. We don't know. I think they're going to carry that. They're the best team in the NBA right now. There's literally no reason to play these bigger names a ton. So that's my problem. That is why Chicago, I think, is the line is so good for them. And we have to wait. But, I mean, if all these dudes are for Boston are off, we take advantage of that. We look at a Peyton Pritchard. We look at Cornet. We look at Brissett. I don't think he's going to... He's been playing some minutes. He hasn't really done anything with it. But in this matchup, this is one where Brissett could come through for us. Um, Tillman hasn't really done much. So, yeah, uh, wait for the news to come out for Boston. But love me some Peyton Pritchard. Regardless, I think he does well. I think Luke Cornett does well. Um, if these guys are starting, we'll, if, if Tatum and Brown are starting in Porzingis, I think the line will move closer, if not change, to Boston. But as of now, Chicago's got it. Um, but if they are in, obviously Jason Tatum is one of the best players out there under 10K. 
Jalen Brown would be one as well. And then Utah versus Houston. We already talked about this. Utah gives up a ton of points. The game is usually high scoring and they give up a ton. Love me some Jalen Green. He's only 8,500. Love me Fred Van Vliet. 8,100. Okay. Jabari Smith Jr. Amen Thompson. Or Amen Thompson. Um, flip side of that though, you know, Utah is going to be playing from behind. What players are we looking for? Taylor Hendricks, I like. I like Walker Kessler, Keontae George, Colin Sexton. I love Colin Sexton. Um, Dylan Brooks. I think John Collins questionable. He's still heartbroken over getting posterized by uh, um, Anthony Edwards just demolishing him. Um, you're at seven. So we kind of mentioned this in in uh, the game two day in uh, was it Thursday? I said the minutes, I mean, we used him. He should get the start. Played 21 minutes, four for seven field goals made, 19.75 fantasy points at 3,000, almost seven times value. That's what we're looking for, seven or more. I don't mind him either. It'll be, obviously, it would make more sense if John Collins is out or is not good to go. Uh, Yurtsevin is a little bit better for me. And there you have it. Those are the games broken down a little bit. Now we're going to use one of the tools to build a lineup. And at the end, we will show you everything on the website to bring it home for you. So this is one tool you can find under the NBA tab, under the NBA points allowed by position. So one tool, not the only tool. This is a tournament lineup. It is subject to change. We are waiting on news notes and everything in between. But let's build a lineup together. So we look at what we look at this. So we're looking at point guard. We filter it. San Antonio gives up the most amount of fantasy points to the opposing point guard, give up an average of 54.8. Phoenix, on the other hand, 54 and a half. What do we have in common? They're playing each other. We look at point guard. We look at is it going to be Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Vassal? Like these guys are great. Uh, we look at Booker, game log. We know the minutes are there, fantasy points are there. I'm throwing him in there right now. Okay, so then we look at. It, it could go either way. You could go Devin Vassell, who's also shooting guard. You've got Trey Jones, who's a cheaper six, well, six thousand option, coming off forty fantasy points, thirty-two fantasy points, thirty forty-two. Had some really good games there. So the difference is almost three thousand dollar difference. For cash, I think you're looking at Devin Booker. I think we know that. Uh, Bradley Beal at 7,500. Beal, on the other hand, 37 minutes a game. He's been okay, but that's 7,500. Vassal, we look at Vassal. 36, 44, 39. These are his measurements. Not too bad at 7,400. I think Trey Jones at 6,000 allows us to pay at other positions. So he's in a good, sh a good matchup here. And I think already what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Vid in there in this matchup, 3,900. We already talked about it. He's my my utility spot. Okay. We're putting Vit as our utility. I want to put him in the utility spot. Allows us 6,600 the rest of the way. Uh, allows us to do a lot. Moving at shooting guard, Washington gives up. The most is shooting guard, followed by Utah, followed by Atlanta. They all play. So Washington, Utah, Atlanta. Okay? Shooting guard. Washington, Utah. Where's Atlanta? Atlanta. We are looking at Jalen Green against Utah. Brandon Miller. Gary, I don't know if he's going to be in, which would open up value in Toronto. Kind of wait on that news. I don't know. Um... But like I said at the beginning of this video, I want to take exposure. I want some Houston. Someone. Maybe multiple someones. I am going with Jalen Green. The minutes have been there. He absolutely dominated against Washington. 36 minutes, 67.5 fantasy points. 54, 51, 40 and a half at his price at 8,500. With putting in VIT, that allows us other positions. It, it just does. And that's what I like. So that's what we're going with with shooting guard. Let's move to small forward real quick. 
Washington, Utah, and Toronto are the top three that give up the most amount. So Washington, so both sides, we can look at both sides there. Washington, Utah, another Houston, and Toronto. So what are we looking at here for small forward if we're following the NBA points allowed by position tool? Okay, we're looking at R.J. Barrett, out. Most likely out, done. Denny has been very frustrating for us. He has some of these games where he plays these minutes and then has 21 fantasy points against Memphis and then Sacramento, Houston. He's had games here. Now, them being up, this is my problem. His price has gone up to 7,100. I think I'm priced off of him. That's the problem. Um, because at 7,100, sorry, 7,100 times 7.5, He's got to get 53.2. Now, he hasn't hit that this year. So that's my problem. And that's a basically minimum. So I think I'm priced out of him. That brings us to Thompson. I don't mind Thompson. The minutes have been there. The outage have been here. But his price is 6,600. It has drastically gone up in the last week. That's a problem. Bruce Brown is one that... His mustache is gross. Minutes have been there up and down as well in a game where maybe they're playing from behind because Washington somehow's there. I think I want to go with Bruce Brown. I don't think you could go wrong with the other guys. I think you'd be good with Thompson. Kispert's the other one where ugh, he's been so frustrating. I don't know if I want to pay 5,400 for him. Ochai's okay. Champagne, Champagne boy here. This one depends on a lot of factors. Okay. You can go down a little bit further. We can go to Jalen McDaniels. The minutes just haven't been there for him. He's not like his brother, Jaden. So um, I'm off of him. So yeah, I think I think overall I'm going to go with Bruce Brown there. Moving to the power forward position. Utah, Atlanta, Toronto. Okay. So power forward, Utah, Atlanta, and Toronto. Brings us to Kuzma. But Washington's up at the moment. Double digits. I'm scared with Kuzma. Uh, Atlanta, Miles Bridges. I I already said Atlanta being up. Miles Bridges was one that I wanted to pay for. So I'm looking at him. Jabari Smith, I'm also looking at. You can go down to Patrick Baldwin or Davis Bertans that we talked about. We talked about these guys. Um, yeah, we talked about these guys. I think I'm paying for Bridges. I'm going to do 8200 Still allows us 5700 for all the way down. So I'm okay with that. Again, this is a tournament lineup. you got to get crazy a little bit at some of these plays. So then center position, Washington, San Antonio, Portland, and Atlanta. So Toronto's number one. Okay. Toronto's number one. That gives up San Antonio. We'd be looking at Phoenix as number two. Portland and Atlanta. Portland's not playing. Atlanta's playing Charlotte. So we look at this. We're looking at um, Nurkic, Olenek, Nick Richards would be the cheapest. Um, Grant Williams, okay. John Tay Porter would be another cheap option. Um, if you don't go a Linux, you could go John Tay Porter. It's a cheap option at 4,600. Allows you to do a lot of things um, with that. And seeing as how Washington gives up the most, 60 and a half, I mean, he would absolutely dominate at 4,600. So, John Tay Porter, I'm okay with there. Now, that allows us a guard and a forward, 6,300 as, as the rest. So, we're going to go through here. We're going to look at. Um, we're going to look at guard here. Sixty-three hundred as an average. You don't have to use it all. Okay, so sixty-three hundred going down a little bit. Maybe you go Amon Thompson because again Utah loves to give up a ton of fantasy points. We use him. Sixty-six hundred brings it down a little bit. I understand that. Um, again. He, 5,400, allows us other... Uh, Peyton Pritchard is the one I think I want to look at. Peyton Pritchard, because I think a lot, the Boston guys might be out, I want to look at Peyton Pritchard at 5,300. Now, our forward, we can go anywhere with it. 7,400. Um, Jabari Smith, another Houston. Olenek, where are we going? I think I'm going to go Jabari Smith because I absolutely love taking players against Utah because they're so bad. They give up so many fantasy points. So that's my lineup. Right there, we built it together. As long as someone's not ruled out, I will have this lineup in there at least one time. Probably make today, probably make five lineups. Um, 
get a little bit crazy. I'm not going to play much because I'm waiting for baseball. So once baseball gets here, that's where we're going to go full bore. If you have not checked out the playlist on this channel, check the playlist out because we go hard for MLB. Videos are 45 minutes to an hour long. We dig in everything that you need. So that being said, that is the lineup I'm building. And just to show you what we have on the site, because we, we mentioned that's what we would do. Um, under the So if you sign up, $24.99 a month is sports betting and DFS. If you use the promo code, if you sign up for the yearly pass, use the promo code MLBVIP. You're going to get a full year for $75. We've upped the um, passes. We're going to unlimit. We have, uh, I think it was upped it to 20 passes now. They expire opening day. So if you don't sign up by opening day, that is it. So that being said, if you sign up with the yearly pass using promo code MLBVIP, all one word, all capital letters, you will get a full year instead of $199, you'll get it for $75. That will include the entire MLB season, the rest of this NASCAR season, the rest of this NBA season, and the majority of next season, the entire NFL season, and the entire rest of the PGA season. So under NBA, we've got Vegas odds, which we've gone over. We've got our sports bets. We've got our simulations. We've got player trends, fantasy points allowed by position, which you already saw. We've got our chalk. So you play cash, you want to follow the chalk. Play tournaments, you want to not follow the chalk. You want to go under. Top plays go both FanDuel and DraftKings. They go by DVP and implied team total. So those are put out a little bit later in the day. NBA DFS player projections, exactly what we talked about. Any player that is projected for at least a minimum of one fantasy point will be on this, and it'll be the main slate. And with that, we have projections, Vegas odds, DVP, uh, last five. We already talked about that. And then our cheat sheet includes, and which I will show you right here. This is yesterday's, but these are cash plays. These are tournament plays. These are leverage plays. Every single day you get six to seven at each position for cash, six to seven at each position for tournaments. We do tiers. We've got tier plays here. We've got lineups. These are starting points. These are not end all be all. These are just starting point lineups to use. Just like it says, remember, use those starting points. Don't just copy paste. These are some of our core plays, but also go with your gut first. So we offer these, but we're trying to make you a better DFS player as well. And then DraftKings, same thing. And then Boomstick Shots. These are players we think are going to score at least seven times value. Seeing as I've hit 55 of these this year, we don't do them every single day, but they are there for you when we feel confident about it. That being said, that's the video. Hopefully you guys had success on Friday. Let me know how you did. Go check out everything we have to offer. Again, I will have linked the Shohei Otani cheating scandal video at the end of this as well. So good luck in this slate. Have a fantastic Saturday. Let's bring home some bacon. Peace.